Transport Phenomena Module 1, Segment 3 Role and Definition of Transport Process With me again, Yusuf from Institute Technology Bandung In order for cells, organs and tissues to function properly, nutrients and regulators of growth and function must be able to move rapidly to and through them. Organisms control the concentrations of molecules in their tissues and organs. Consequently, specialized mechanisms have evolved for the movement of molecules across and within cells. Transport phenomena in general involve the integrated study of momentum, mass and energy transfer as well as thermodynamics and kinetics of chemical reactions. For the biomedical engineer, a mechanistic understanding of transport process is important for the characterization of physiological and cellular processes, the design and operation of a number of devices, and the development of new therapies. The field of transport phenomena is sufficiently far advanced that the basic processes can be characterized mathematically. The predictive capabilities of models are quite good, even for complex biological systems. Analytical and numerical solutions are already available for many commonly encountered problems pertaining to a number of natural phenomena, as well as to the design of many technologies. Two physical phenomena are involved in the transport of molecules. First is diffusion and second is convection. Diffusion is the random motion of molecules that arises from thermal energy transferred by molecular collision. Convection is a mechanism of transport resulting from the bulk motion of fluids. The movement of energy and momentum in biological systems is influenced by these two mechanisms. Collisions between molecules occur trillions of times per second. Each collisions result in the random motion of solute and solvent molecules. This random motion gives rise to diffusion which occurs in gases, in liquid solutions, in membranes and in the interstitial space of tissues. The speed at which a molecule diffuses in a fluid or membrane depends upon its size and shape the temperature and the fluid viscosity, a property that reflects the resistance of flow. In spite of the random nature of these collisions, net motion of molecules results. The term random walk is used to describe the net molecular motion arising from such collisions. A macroscopic consequence of random molecular motion is the phenomenon that diffusing molecules move from regions of higher concentration to lower concentration. These special differences are known as concentration gradients. The net movement of molecules through a unit area in a given direction is known as flux. In general, a flux is defined for any transported quantity as the amount of the quantity passing through a unit area per unit time. Fluxes can be defined for mass, energy and momentum. Fluxes have a magnitude and directions and are thus vectors. The diffusion flux is proportional to the gradient of the concentration. The relation between the diffusion flux and concentration was first quantified in 1855 by Adolf Fick and is known as Fick's first law. The quantity that relates the diffusion flux to the concentration gradient is the binary diffusion coefficient, which is a function of temperature and pressure. The diffusion coefficient is largest for gases due to the relative unimportance of intermolecular forces and the low frequencies at which molecules physically interact. Because of the decreased mobility of molecules in liquids, diffusion is 10 times to 100 thousand times slower in liquids than in gases, in which the diffusing molecule can travel distance much larger than the molecular size before colliding with the solvent molecule. In complex structures such as tissues, the diffusion distances are greatly increased due to the presence of obstructions created by the extracellular matrix and cells. 
Fick's law can be used to describe diffusion in tissues if the diffusion coefficient is replaced with an effective diffusion coefficient. The diffusion coefficient characterizes the diffusion of one molecule relative to another. Effective diffusion incorporates the effect of increased distance and drag forces exerted by the extracellular matrix and cells. Convection is a mechanism of transport resulting from the bulk motion of fluids. Gases and liquids are fluids that flow following the application of forces such as gravity, pressure or sharing force. The resulting application of a force upon a surface is characterized in terms of stress. The amount of stress depends on the magnitude of the applied force, the direction of the force and the surface to which the force is applied. Shear stresses result from forces applied tangent to a surface, causing two contiguous parts of the material to slide relative to each other. Biological examples of sharing forces are those which occur in joints and in the eyelids. Stresses acting perpendicular to a surface can be compressive or tensile. Pressure which helps propel the flow of blood through the circulatory system is a compressive normal stress. Both the application of a shear stress and the pressure difference result in fluid motion. If fluid motion is slow relative to diffusion, then diffusion will dominate. In contrast, if the fluid motion is fast relative to diffusion, the net motion will be dominant means of transport. The fluid viscosity is a measure of the frictional resistance of a fluid to flow. The force that must be applied in order to produce motion is proportional to the fluid viscosity. For a pure fluid, the viscosity is a thermodynamic function of the temperature and pressure. Gases have relatively low viscosities, whereas liquids are much more viscous and dense due to the presence of intermolecular forces. The kinematic viscosity is a measure of the efficiency of momentum transport. The kinematic viscosity is analogous to the diffusion coefficient and characterizes the diffusion of momentum. By using an analogy, a general relation for flux can be expressed by equation 1. The negative sign in equation 1 is used because transport occurs down a gradient that is from a greater to a lesser magnitude of the quantity being transported. In order to render the flux a positive quantity in the direction of transport, a negative sign is often applied. A dimensionless group known as the Reynolds number describes the ratio of initial forces to viscous forces which can be expressed by equation 2. Initial forces act on the fleet to cause it to accelerate or deaccelerate, whereas viscous forces arises from the fractional resistance offered by the fluid. Reynolds number also represents the ratio of momentum transport by convection to momentum transport by diffusion. Flow can be characterized as lamina or turbulent. For steady laminar flow, the velocity at any given location does not change with time. However, when the flow is turbulent, the velocity fluctuates randomly due to the formation and dissipation of eddies of fluid at high energy. Turbulent flow may occur in arteries or in the lungs during heavy breathing and coughing. For the next segment, we will discuss about importance of convection and diffusion. Until then, I am Yusuf from Institute Technology Bandung.